we recognize that you are a holy God. We ask that you circumcise our heart afresh, O oh God. Remove carnality, we pray. Renew our minds, O oh God, so we might be spiritually minded and not carnal. As we are about to do the Lord's Supper, we recognize that the Lord's Supper, O oh God, is reflective of the Passover. And during the Passover, O oh God, you said, the bread is to be eaten without yeast, O oh God. Father God, on this day, may you remove all yeast that's in our life, that we may be made holy and worthy to partake of this meal, O oh God. Remove all yeast, O oh God. Remove all carnality. Cause us to have a subjected heart, a submissive heart to your Lordship, O oh God. Let rebellion be ceased, O oh God. Let this meal break forth like never before. Let this be a day, God, in the name of Jesus, of great understanding and wisdom. Father God, we thank you and we give you praise. Creating us a clean heart and your right spirit within us, we pray. This we ask in Jesus' holy name. I say amen and amen. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, praise and worship team, as usual. Praise God. Thank you for your ministry. Um, that is a blessing to all of us who partake of it. Amen. This Sunday is almost like a commission Sunday where we're going to just uh, we take a pause from what we've been talking about in terms of community and the vision for the year. And, you know, we're going to go into uh, our Lord's Supper, Lord's Supper, Lord's Supper um, that we scheduled uh, to have today. Praise God. So I'm going to try and, and, and slow myself. Then I was listening to myself the other day. I said, that's, that's too fast. And so I'm going to try and slow myself down as best as I can today. So it is the Lord's Supper. So I will be ministering on that. And I just pray that it will be a blessing and encouragement to your heart. The Lord's Supper, and I want to focus on the word that became the Lamb of God. The word that became the Lamb of God. And if you have your Bible, if we could turn to Matthew chapter 26 from verse 17 to 30. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 17 to 30. Uh, while, those are, while those at home are looking for your Bible, I just want to say in case you didn't have anything prepared, your way for your bread, praise God, your wine, amen, a.k.a. grape juice perhaps, uh, something symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ, then you know, now would be a good time to do so. Uh, so that way, you know, when we're there to pray, you're not rushing to do so at the end of the service. So... Uh, please do get yourself prepared, those at home. Praise God. Uh, we have been announcing it, but by chance, if you participated with us and you're, you're saved and you weren't aware of it, um, then we just want to take, have you take a quick moment to kind of get yourself ready, prepared, get your mind and your heart in the right frame. Praise God as we uh, partake of the Lord's Supper today. Praise the name of Jesus. So I'll read. Verse 17 says, On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparation for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, one of you who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him if he had, had, if he had not been born. Then Judas, one of, Ju then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many of the, for, many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 
When they had sung a hymn, they went out to Mount Olives. And I'll stop there. Praise God. So Jesus says, take this bread. They're having a Passover. It says, uh, eat this bread. It's going to be uh, given to you from my body. It's your, your meat. And here is the cup. Uh, this shall be my blood. Uh, drink it. It is the blood of the new covenant. And remember, the context of this is that they've gone out to make preparation for the Passover meal. They're about to have the Passover meal. And the Passover is, meal is described in detail in Exodus chapter 12. So we understand that the meal needs a lamb and it needs unliving bread. But here's Jesus saying, no, take this bread and it's symbolic of my body. He's not giving them a lamb. He's saying, here, drink this. This is symbolic of my blood. So he's clearly indicating that he has become the Passover. Uh, praise God. And as I said, if you read Exodus chapter 12, it breaks down the first time that the Passover is instituted. So we understand clearly that the Lord's Supper is supposed to reflect the Passover meal. But there's something very profound, profound sorry, about this scripture, is that Jesus is clearly, and if you read St. John chapter 6, it shows you clearly again that he has identified himself as the Passover Lamb of God. You know, he says the same words in John chapter 6 about eating his body, and you shall not die, you know, his body's bread that came down from heaven, drinking his blood, the life source, praise God. So he's been identifying himself throughout the gospel as a Passover to a Jewish hearer. These words would have meant a lot to them because they, if there's one festival that they all Jewish people is very familiar with, it's the Passover. The Passover was the establishment of the Jewish nation. It's through the Passover that they were released from Egypt and became a nation of themselves. So out of all the festivals that they celebrate, uh, praise God, this one would be most symbolic for them because it was a Passover to which their identity became, uh, began to be, uh, their identity was formed as a nation, the nation of God, uh, descendant of Abraham. So it's one, some, it's one that they're all familiar with. So when Jesus is using this language, Unlike us, they would have known for sure that he's referring to himself as a meal, the Passover meal. And that's why he confounded a lot of people in St. John chapter 6. And, and the thing that I want us to do, the word that I want us to kind of enter into our spirit before we go into the Lord's Supper is this. The word of God is sure. The word of God is sure. Jesus is having the Passover meal with the disciples while he's still alive. If you know anything about the Passover, the lamb needs to die. While he's still alive, not yet, and, and, and the, the, his, the, the, the trial has not yet began, he's guaranteeing them that he's going to die for them. If you read the rest of Matthew chapter 26, he goes to Gethsemane, and he's, he's, the, the weight of what he's about to go is beginning to hit him, and he's beginning to pray right in the same Matthew chapter 26. And he's stressed, and he's saying, Father, if it's possible, can you allow this cup to pass me by? And he's in great prayer. In this context, Jesus don't reveal how the Father is referring back to him. We don't know how the Father is responding to his prayer. But he's saying, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass me by. No, the Bible does not say this. But I, I envision the Father saying, listen, you have guaranteed and given the disciples your word. You just had the Lord's Supper with them. You have guaranteed them that you're going to die for them. And that you're going to take on the sins of this world. Uh, and and, and, and I, I believe that there, in that discussion, there must have been some reflection of the Father in terms of what just took place with the disciples. Because by having the Lord's Supper with them and saying, this is now my body, eat it. And this is now my blood. He is saying, I am guaranteeing that I'm about to die for you. I am going to become the true Passover. He was still alive when he did that. He had given his word to the disciples and the twelve. And when in his humanity the weight hit him and he's praying, Father, not my will, but your will be done. I believe in that moment, the revelation of the word and this Lord's Supper that he just did. Because if he had not gone to the cross, that means that the Lord's Supper would have been a lie and deceptive. But he did all that before he went to the cross. He said, I am going to do this. And when the weight of the cross hit him, he had already given his word. And we're going to talk about what the word of God really means you know, when we take the Lord's Supper meal, we need to begin to have an assurance of how serious God is. You see, when the weight of the sin and all the issues was going to hit Jesus, he had already promised to die for not only the disciples, but from the world. And when he was on the cross and he was being mocked and jeered, uh, he, he, 
He had already given his word that he was going to become the lamb. And when the sin hit him and the father's relationship with him broke, and he says, Father, why have you forsaken me? He had already given his word because he said to Pilate, at any point in this process, I have the authority to stop it. He says that my kingdom is not of this world. If I wanted to, my disciples would fight. I would be able to call my angels. So at any point in the process, Jesus could have stopped it himself. Does everyone understand that? So the whole process was him committing himself to his word. At no point there was any authority great enough to, st uh, to, uh, to, to kill him if he said, you know what, I don't want to do this no more. But he was committed to his word. And the profound thing that I want us to understand is that he gave his word before he died. He gave his word that I'm going to die. And in the midst of his trial, he was not going to break his word. In the midst of his weakness, he was not going to break his word. In the midst of his isolation, he was not going to break his word. In the midst of the very disciples that walked with him, betrayed him and left him, he was not going to break his word. And the biggest one is that when the Father's presence itself left him, which would have been the hardest thing that Jesus faced, he did not break his word. When us as Christians read about the suffering uh, of Jesus Christ and really take the scripture into context, we must begin to understand how valuable God's word is. Uh, one of the great things Satan has done from the beginning and will continue to do is get us to undermine and belittle and minimize the word of God. Satan said to Adam and Eve, God said, what did God say? And they said, God said this, don't you know that God is lying to you? Don't you know that if you actually go against his word, then these blessings are going to come into your life? And throughout history, Satan has always been getting God's people to try and not understand the fullness of God's word. I said God's people because those that he have, he doesn't need to worry about them. His servant, those who are held captive to sin, he has them already. So it's God's people that he's trying to get not to understand the fullness of God's word and what it means to him. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to read some scriptures to us so we could really understand how serious God is about his word. And you could take it down and go reflect on it in your own time. Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields the seed of, to, sorry, sorry, so that it yield the seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty or void, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. Hebrews 6 from verse 30 says, When God made this promise to Abraham, since there is no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And, for, and so after waiting patiently, Abraham received that was that which was promised unto him. It goes on in verse 16 to say, people swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the hearers, puro, that, in, that means us, of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did, did this so that by two unchangeable or unmutable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie. We have fled, we, sorry, we have fled to take hold of the hope set before us. May be greatly encouraged. Let's say that again. We have fled to take hold, take hold of the hope set before us so that we may be greatly encouraged by two immutable things that God swore by himself and that it's impossible for God to lie. How we position ourselves in alignment with God's word. Numbers 23, verse 16. The Lord met with Balaam, who was at this point been hired by Balak to curse the children of Israel. The Lord met with Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go back to Balak and give him this word. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? 
I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. Similar to Hebrews chapter 6, God is not like a human being. He does not lie nor change his mind or waver on his word. And the great attack against the children of God is for us to waver on a word that won't waver itself. If God's word don't waver, it means that only our faith wavers. And I remember in Matthew chapter 6, 17, there's a man where you're struggling and the, Jesus came down on the mountain. The man says, I believe, but help though my unbelief. One of the most profound statements in the Bible. In other words, God, I believe on some issues, but I struggle in others. But our pursuit is to really be firm in all the counsel of God. Because God will not lie to his children. Not only can he not lie to his children, I've always said that for God to lie is, the self, is not to exist no more. His existence is dependent upon his character. If his character changes, his existence fails. God's existence is dependent upon his character. He can do nothing but be holy. He can do nothing but be truthful. He has to be this because his existence is linked to his character. You see, us as human beings, we could waver and still be, uh, exist tomorrow because our nature is of such. But God's existence is linked to his character. He can't change. When we're not faithful, he's going to remain faithful. When we're not holy, he's going to remain holy. When we're not loving, he's going to remain loving. When we're not just, he's going to remain just. He's going to remain kind when we're not kind because God does not change. Sometimes there are issues that we respond to God as we respond to human being because as human being, there's no consistency at time. Sometimes Pastor Taz is not as consistent. And sometimes we can allow our relationship with a human being uh, to be thrown upon God. The word of God is serious and God is very serious about how we respond to his word. In Luke chapter 1, God sends the angel to speak to Zechariah. Zechariah is old and his wife Elizabeth is old and they're past the time of childbirth. And he says to Zechariah, listen, I've, I've seen your faithfulness and, and I've come down and it was his time to go into the temple of the Lord. And, 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 and the angel says, you're going to have a child. Zechariah says, how? Oh, how am I going to have a child? And the angel said this profound thing. He says, I stand in the presence of God. And it's almost like, would you not believe me? I, I am bringing a word from the presence of God, the unchangeable God, the God that will not lie. He will not change his mind. And will you not believe me? He says, I, I, I can't allow you to speak until the child birth itself because obviously your, your, your seriousness about the word of God is not as such. So I, I don't want you to speak contrary to what the word is. So you'll be silent. In Genesis chapter 18, a similar story with Abraham and Sarah, and Abraham is old, and Sarah is old, and, and God had promised Abraham that you're going to have a children, and their, their nation is going to be flooded with your children. And they believed, but then time passed. Time passed. God came back and began to tell Abraham, remember I told you this now, they're well in their, I believe at around this time, they're maybe around either 100 and uh, probably 90, but they're very old, or 99 and 89 because they, Abraham had a child the next year. But the Bible says that Sarah heard the word of the Lord that God was talking to Abraham, and the Bible says she laughed within herself. She became cynical about it. And God said, why did Sarah laugh? And Sarah got shot because she knew she laughed, but her mouth didn't open up. She knew that within her heart, she really didn't, wasn't confident in the word of God and what God said. God says, no, I, I heard you laugh. I heard you laugh at my word. The word that I've spoken, I, I, I saw the cynicalness that you had about it. Know that this time next year, it's going to happen. Mark chapter 11, the disciples were walking and Jesus saw a fig tree. And he looked at the fig tree and it looked glittery green and beautiful and he took a closer look and he saw that there's no fruit it says this tree is a deception it says curse be this tree a matter of fact let me just read it mark 11 verse 14 then he said to the tree may no one ever eat the fruit from you again and his disciple heard heard him say that but when you read the scripture what happened the tree looked green almost like it laughed at jesus nothing happened there's no change in the tree and they left and walked away. Because sometimes the enemy could try to paint a picture like that. We heard the word of God. The word has gone forth. And it's almost like the enemy's laughed at us. The tree still looks green. 
so much for this word that God spoke. But Jesus never wrestled with a tree or fight with a tree or said, Peter, this tree's been rebellious. Bring me an axe. Let me cut it down. See, now they don't want to obey my word. He spoke to the tree. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. And he left. Done. Went on to his business. You'd figure that he gets upset at the rebellious tree that he'd just say, I'm going to cut off every limb by limb. But he left. The next day they came back. The Bible said the tree was withered from the very roots. In other words, there's no recovery for the tree. The word had manifested itself. At this moment, I want to decree and call forth a next day in all of our lives. Call forth a next day in all of our life. Some of us have heard some word, but it has not yet manifested. And it's like the enemy is trying to boast itself against our life. And we feel like we need to just get some axe and begin to cut down the tree and, 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 and tear it down because we're not seeing the manifestation of the word of God. But I want to say to us that the next day is upon us. God says, I don't lie to people. I'm not like man to lie or change my mind. I will be truthful. And the things that's boasting itself in our life, I want to call forth the next day in all of our lives. I want to decree to you that the thing that stands bold before you and, and try to prosper itself before you and stand against the will of God in your life, I decree that from the very root it will shrink and it will be shriveled up. Why am I saying this on a day of the Lord's Supper? The Bible tells us that the word became flesh and dwelt with man. The Lord's Supper that we're partaking of, the Lamb, is the Word of God. We're consuming the Word of God. It is a revelation and a reminder of the Word of God, the established Word of God, the spoken Word of God, the written Word of God, the prophetic Word of God, the rhema Word of God, the personal Word of God that you received in your life. It's a reminder of the faithfulness of God to watch over his word and to perform it. It's a reminder that God does word does not change. It's a reminder that the very word exists, the very world exists by the word of God. If God's word ceased, then existence must cease because God said, let there be light and there was light. Everything that came into being came into being by God's word. So the minute God's word fails, then existence must fail. The minute God lies, then existence must die because everything is being kept uh, by the counsel and by the word of God. That's how serious this is. All life depends upon God being truthful. All life being sustained depends upon God being truthful. This is not an if or but things. That's why God calls his children to be truthful because truth supports life. And lie birth forth death. Can I say that again? Truth supports life. And a lying spirit invokes death. That's why when, when Satan lied to Adam and Eve and they believed, death came. Jesus said in St. John chapter 8, your father, Satan, is a father of lies. is a spirit of death because lie brings forth death. But truth upholds all things. When we come to the Lord's Supper, it's a reminder of the faithfulness of God to watch over his word. It's a, excuse me, it's a reminder that God gave his word long before he ended up on the cross. That I will die for humanity. As I wrap up, God said to Jeremiah, he is my scroll, eat it. God said to John in Revelation, eat it. Sometimes the word is bitter, sometimes it's sweet. Sometimes it brings correction, sometimes it brings encouragement. But the word is for life. Can I say that again? Sometimes the word is bitter. It brings instruction and correction. Sometimes it's encouraging. But it's all for life. God told Jeremiah, eat all of it. Can I speak to somebody? You don't ever want to eat the sweet part and leave the bitter part. Because the bitter part is the cleansing component of the word of God. I know our generation only wants to hear good things. But God says he corrects those whom he loves. The word says holiness unto God. The word says don't lie. The word says keep your heart pure and your mind pure before the presence of a holy God. The word says I love you and I'll never forsake you. The word says no matter where you go, I'm going to be with you. The word says you're the head and not the tail. The word says you're more than a conqueror. The word says you can overcome. 
and the entire counsel of God's word makes us better. People of God. We never want to be uh, uh, off balance as it pertains to God's word. We want to be encouraged when it encourages us. And we want to be submissive when it corrects us. But we always want to walk in the counsel of God's word. It is bitter sometimes. It is sweet sometimes. But whether bitter or sweet, it's all for life. And for our betterment. So eat ye all of it. All of God's word. Eat all of his flesh. Drink of his blood, symbolic of the Holy Spirit and the New Testament. Fill yourself with the things of God and the spirit of truth. And be reminded today that God watches over his word to perform it in all things. If he did not shy away from the word on the cross, the most difficult moment that the Bible teaches that God experienced, if he did not break his word in that moment, I guarantee he's not going to break it on his throne. If he did not break it when he was by himself, even the Father's love left him, he won't break it now. With thorns in his head, if he did not break it then, he won't break it now. People spitting on him, if he did not break it then, he won't break it now. God is faithful over his word. Come, Sister Jai, we're going to end there. And before we go to the Lord's Supper, I'm going to pray for what I call prophetic insight. See, sometimes the word of God is in us, but there's no insight to the word of God. So it's not, it's dormant. The word is dormant. But the writer of Hebrews 4 says the word of God is living, it's powerful, it's sharp, it's quick. It's able to make alive. And for all of us, including myself, I want to pray that whatever word God has put in us, that will get the prophetic insight into the word, the understanding. We'll be like Jeremiah, we'll be like uh, the John the Revelator, we get insight into God's word. Prophetic insight into God's word. No, I'm not praying that all of us become a prophet, that's not what I'm saying. But we get prophetic insight into the word that God has put within us. That the word don't become dormant, but it becomes alive and sharp and active. The word that God won't fail to perform. Eat ye all of it. Consume it. Consume it. The word of God. Not the word of man, the word of God. There's such attack on the word of God. The world is attacking it. But we decree that the word of God is sure. It's so funny that we attack the, mankind attacked the very thing that's keeping them alive. If man was supposed to win the battle over God's word, they would die instantaneously. And creation have no understanding of what they're fighting over. The word of God. People of God, eat the bitter part. Eat the warning also. Eat the fact that Christ is returning for his church. He doesn't want any to perish, but all to be saved and come to eternal life. Eat that part. That part's just as good. The bitterness, the isop, is the part that speaks of sanctification and cleansing. It's the part that speaks of leaving sin alone and walking righteously before God. The bitter part of God's word is just as good. It's just as needed as the honey. Eat it, all of it. You have saved if you have not come to Jesus Christ. The word of God says without Christ there is a harm, horrible destruction that awaits all who have not accepted Jesus Christ into their life. It doesn't sound good, but the end is good if we respond to it. Eat all of it. The word says the wage of sin is death. Eat all of it. But the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The word of God says those that don't want to repent, God eventually will harden their heart and lead them into the path of hardiness. Romans chapter 1. But those who will humble themselves, God will always restore. The humble he will always lift up and the prideful he will always bring down. The word of God says we are the children of God, joint heirs with him. Be encouraged in your spirit. Somebody remember. God has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Eat ye all of it. And I pray right now for a prophetic insight 
into the words that God has deposited into your heart. I call for prophetic insight and understanding. You see, until there's understanding of the word, the word can't be active. But I pray right now that the word that God has deposited, God has spoken to us for so long, so many seasons, so many preaching, so many meditation, quiet meditation, your own personal time, so many devotion that we have had, so many worship moments we have had with God and He spoke to us, so much in our diaries, so much we have written down. My God, there's such word within us. I pray right now that all these words will be quickened and awakened for this, this moment and for this time in the name of Jesus. I pray that the word of God will begin to seep. I pray that when we take the Lord's Supper today, that the word will become activated like never before in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your devotion will become fruitful. I pray that your worship life and the word that you've received will become fruitful in the name of Jesus. I pray that you remember what God has spoken to you and that you will lay hold of it in the season in the name of Jesus God will watch over his word God will watch over his word in the name of Jesus I saw Elijah and I saw Elijah depressed and stressed out because of the threat against his flesh but God brought him to a mountain and God spoke to him again and strengthened him with his word. May God speak into your spirit again and may you be strengthened by the power of God's spirit in the name of Jesus. I, this, there's a reason why we don't do Lord's Supper every single Sunday because we don't want it to become ritualistic. We want us to understand what the weight of this meal is. We want to understand that Jesus said to his disciples that I guarantee you that I'm going to die for you. I want you to eat this before before I go to the cross because I am that faithful to you I will die for my bride I will die for my bride and when the stuff gets heavy and I look to the heavens and say father is there any way that this cup can pass me by I will remember that I gave my word and I won't lie and when I'm on the cross and I'm being jeered and I'm being mocked I will remember my word that I spoke over my children and even when the presence of the father left me and I'm distressed and I'm saying father I will remember my word that have spoken we decree and we declare that the word of God is true we decree that the bitter word is good we decree that the honey is good God's word is good for us come on somebody God's word is good for us and I, I feel that there's resurrection time that is needed. Somebody, you have spent so much time in the presence of God. Somebody, you've had so much devotion in the presence of God. The word of God is seeping through you. The word of God is seeping through you. It just needs to be activated. My God, look at all the time that you put in the presence of God. Look at all the devotions you've had. Look at all the scriptures you've read. My God, the word of God is in you. It is powerful. It's it's living it is sharp and is able to have you overcome in the season my God you have eaten at the Word of God you have been those who have been hungry and thirsty for righteousness and God has filled you I decree and I declare you are not an empty vessel but you are a full vessel and the Word of God is within you I decree and I declare that your cup is running over I decree and I declare that you are not weak but you are strong because God's Word is within you and he or you will overcome by his word I decree that your faith is strong because you hear the word of, and because you hear the word faith is within you my God stir up the word within you 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 greater is he that's within me than he that within the world what is that the word of truth uh, I am the head and I'm not the tailor if God be for me what can be against me somebody somebody there's words within you pastor I don't remember the scripture yes you do get into the presence of God uh, and it begins to come through your mouth like you've never known before yes you do the word is within you pastor forgot it no you are not uh, the start back up in the name of Jesus uh, you have eaten of God you came to his table and you feasted with him uh, somebody you are stronger than you think uh, you are more powerful than you think uh, the word is within you the word is within you the word is within you my God somebody needs to confess uh, that the word of God is within me the word of God is within me the word of truth is with 
the word of truth the word of truth the lamb the word the flesh came to earth and by that we begin to eat of the lamb eat of the lamb the living word if the word is living if the word is powerful if the word is sharp and discerning therefore I am living therefore I am powerful therefore I am a discerner because the word of oh my God therefore I am wise therefore I'm endued with knowledge because the word of God is within me because the truth of God is within me we can't shift on the word there's too much warfare in the spirit realm we got to understand I don't feel wise but I remember that I spent devotion I had devotional I remember I had worship time so therefore the word I decree that I am wise in this season somebody I decree that I am wise in this season I decree that I am wise I have eaten I have eaten at the table of God I have eaten at the table of God I am wise I feel confused but I will say truth I am wise I feel confused but I will say truth I am wise can I say that again I feel confused but I am wise because the word is within me can I say that again I honestly feel confused but I am wise because I ate at the table of God God will not forsake his he says come to me the heavy lady in the burden and feast at my table God prepare your table before your children as we eat of your word let the weak say I am strong for the strength of God word is within you let the fool say I am wise I have made I may have made a foolish decision yesterday but I shall be wise today because the word of God is not going to stay dormant in me anymore let the poor say I am rich I might have been discouraged yesterday but I will encourage myself in the Lord today father God your word is true as we come down Satan is a lying spirit the word is not dead in you but it's living it's quick and it's sharp David encouraged himself in the Lord you know why he was able to do that he had scriptures within him that's how you encourage yourself in the Lord you have scriptures within you and you begin to reflect back upon the scripture the circum the circumstance looked bad David lost his family his wife his children he was being condemned by his soldiers he was lonely and isolated but he must have remembered his psalms and his scripture and the bible said he encouraged himself in the lord that's what the word does it being to the saint back to yourself god i i don't feel wise but your word decree that this is i am i begin to speak back into your spirit and then the word goes on and connect with the word and, and then you think, oh my god i remember more than i thought i remembered i i i i, I, I i'm more anointed than i thought because it begin to speak back to the word and you begin to command the word to come back up your devotion was not in vain your fasting was not in vain Satan is a lie could somebody help me speak to the sycamore tree could somebody see the tree standing and saying I won't budge at the word of God but can we say that our next day is coming our next day is coming can we say our next day is coming can we say I see the tree it stood and Jesus didn't fight it Jesus like I spoke this word I'm gone because the word must manifest in season so he left and the disciples came back and they said oh my god the word manifests but Jesus never doubted the word for one moment I decree and I declare God the things that stand and it's, uh, the leaves are green and the tree won't budge but by the name of Jesus Christ Christ alone the only name that could command the root to shrivel up the bold things oh God the stubborn things the unmovable things we command them to shrivel up God bring the next day into Ehau bring the next day into the life of the members of Ehau God let the unmovable become moved oh God for you decree the things that exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ Jesus must be a base you have decreed it, O oh God. 
bring down all things that need to be brought down that your name may be glorified and as we come to your Lord, your table God cleanse us oh God this is just not a ritual but we are going to eat of your word and we're going to drink of your spirit and we're going to be made strong right now as we eat of your word and as we drink of your spirit I decree that strength is going to begin to prevail in our body I decree breakthrough and deliverance in the name of Jesus for your word is still powerful and it's still living and it's still sharp oh God it's not just a simple wafer it's not just a piece of bread it's not just ritual but the power of God we decree this a holy meal as sanctified meal an anointed meal this is the table of God this is the promised table of God so God we come to your table God being made worthy only through the sacrifice of Jesus may you bless this table God the Lord's Supper means nothing until you bless it so God bless it as you did in the days of Balaam and Balak where your word did not fail you God and he said I've commanded you to bless he said I put my mouth my word in the mouth of Balaam and Balaam looked unto Balak and says God don't change his mind and he won't lie I can't even take your prayer because nothing's going to change so God will you bless our table will you bless it let it be a table of blessing and not a table of curse may this table make us whole and make us well may the Lord's supper release the blood like never before over our life and over our dwelling place we rebuke all things all things that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of Jesus. As it was in Egypt, let death pass us by. And let your spirit be lifted up in the name of Jesus. May the heart of your children be encouraged like never before today, God. We call this the table of encouragement today, God. We call this the table of encouragement. By faith, I say, God, no one that eats of this table will be discouraged. But I release the spirit of encouragement to all as David encouraged himself in the Lord. Thank you that they shall all be encouraged because they have eaten of the word of God. Bless our table now. For unless you bless it, this is all in vain, God. And we need to eat. We need to eat. As we go into the Lord's Supper, the Bible says this. Man shall not live by bread alone but by the word that's proceeded out of the mouth of God. May the word of God be stirred up in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just sometimes I close my eyes just to keep my focus. Strange, or when your eyes close, your thoughts don't run as far. But I don't want this to feel like a wafer, and I don't want this to feel like a piece of bread if you're at home. But I want it to be the Lamb of God. I want to feel that this is the Lamb of God, the Word of God, the Word of truth in my head. It is a reflection of the words that I've heard, I've meditated upon, I've, I've seen. And I pray that the Word of God, the body of Christ, says, this is my body, the bread. The heavenly bread, the heavenly truth that came down from heaven. That you eat of it and you shall not die. The word of encouragement for discouragement is a spirit of death. Here's the word of life. Just see it as such. Don't see a wafer, don't see a piece of bread. But by God's spirit, see your encouragement, see your breakthrough. See the love of God over your life. See the banner of God over your life. And as we see this, we say, God, thank you for this. Thank you for your body and your promise in our life. Eat ye all of it. Thank you, Jesus. As you get ready, you get your cup. Jesus says, this is a cup of the New Testament. This is my blood that was shed for you, the establishment of the New Testament covenant. As we were drinking, remember what the writers of Hebrews says in 6, that God said to Abraham, he gave him an oath by two immutable things that he can't lie and that he does not break his word. He swore by himself. So we're reminded as we drink this of the covenant relationship that we have with God, the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. Remember of this new covenant, the covenant of life, the New Testament, 
we're reminded of God's faithfulness. And those who of us who are part of the new covenant drink this with encouragement in the name of Jesus as children of the new covenant. The blood of Jesus, symbolic of his spirit. Drink ye all of it. Praise God. Sister Gem, as we end, if you go back and remember, you read, praise God, Matthew chapter 26, verse 30. It says, after the Lord's Supper, they began to sing songs of hymns. And we just wanted us for five minutes, just let's give God all the praise as we close off today's service. They said, after the Lord's Supper, in Matthew chapter 26, they said that they began to sing songs of hymns. So we just want to just give God praise, whatever is on your heart. You could just praise God if you just want to pr uh, play Sister Jam, if the worship team, if you want to worship. We just want to give God just praise for one minute. Praise God. Sister Jam, just pray. And then we just want to give God praise for just one minute. Praise God. And then we're going to close off. We don't know what God is doing, but we know that he's doing something. We don't know all that God is doing, but we know that he's doing something. The Bible says when they had the Lord's Supper, they, they sing songs of praise. They were so thankful unto God. Because they were brought to the table of God. How precious we are to be brought to the table of God. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you the glory, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That is a treasure that's within us, oh God. The word of truth, oh God. In this broken, frail vessel, there's treasures, heavenly treasures within it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody, just on your own behalf, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know what God is doing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever fig tree that was standing before you, boasting itself, acting that it won't bend at the word of God, acting that it won't shift because of the word of God. We give God praise that these things will move. For God, your word is true. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's your own personal situation. This is this is where it's just you just saying, God, thank you, God. And some of you might be looking at some very difficult situation, but say, thank you, God. You have spoken over my life. Thank you, God. I won't be distressed no more by the fig tree that seems to be unmovable. I, I'm not going to get angry and cut it down limb by limb. Your word is going to have to prevail in this season. So we thank you, God. God, we thank you. We thank you. Such a promise-keeping God. Promise-keeping God. We thank you. Come on, folks. Just in your own way. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Your word is prevailing. Your word is prevailing in this season. Thank you, God. Your word is prevailing. Thank you, God. Minister Holy Spirit, minister, minister, minister Holy Spirit. Your word is prevailing, minister Holy Spirit. Those at home, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's where you are. Let's begin to, God, your word is prevailing. Praise God, especially those at home. You can be free. You can open your mouth. Praise God, you don't have to worry who's in your circle. To say, God, thank you. Your word is prevailing. Your word is prevailing over my life. Your word is prevailing. I heard it clearly, and it is prevailing. It is prevailing. It is working. It is working. We thank you for your word, God. It's working, oh God. It's working in the night hour. It's working. When I went to sleep, oh God, and the, the fig tree was still there, the word was working at the roots. It was working at the roots. Thank you, God. And to hear the prophecy of God, it was working at the roots. You see, God did not just want to address the fruits. He wanted to address the roots also. So he had to allow the word to germinate and begin to work at the hidden things in the name of Jesus. So make sure that it doesn't continue to come back season after season and repeat itself. So the word was working. It's not that God was lying to you. It's not that God was neglecting you. It's not that God was not being faithful to you. But the word has been working in the season. It's been working in the been working underneath the ground. You've not been able to see it, but it's working on your behalf in the name of Jesus. And the things that look boastful before you, I decree that the God's word is working on your behalf. God, we command cycles to end. Allow the roots to dry up. Let cycles, ungodly cycles end. Allow ungodly cycles to end. Father God, don't allow us to march around in circles anymore. But allow our cycles to end. 
address the root issues, oh God, in our life. That cycles can end in the name of Jesus. Allow the root issues to be addressed. That cycles can end. We decree that the word of God is working. It's working in Ehau. It's working in your daughter's life and in your son's life. Your word will not fail you. It will not return to you void. Oh my God, it will not return. It will go and do what you have sent it to do. It will accomplish its purposes, oh God. So we bless your word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we bind every lying spirit that's trying to establish itself in our life and in our mind, oh God. We bind every deceptive work of Satan. And we confess the word of truth. Uh, we confess the word of truth, oh God, over our life. We thank you for prophetic insight into the season. God, you are, we will understand like never before. I decree that we are wise in this season. Wise this my God, wise decisions in this season. For the spirit of wisdom is within us. Wise decision in this season. Come on, somebody. Win your battles. Win your battles. Wise decisions. Even before I came up here, I realized that there was a decision that I, uh, I need to make. Wise decisions in this season. God shall lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Let, the, let, let us begin to decree that, God, I am wise. I, I don't care how I feel. I don't care how confused I feel. I am wise the word of wisdom is within me the word of truth is within me Father God we pray against errors and, and faulty decisions in this season may you anoint us with a wisdom let it come forth oh God any major decision we decree that we are wise let there be prophetic insight into your children's life prophetic insight as we end, God said to the wise men, you've done your task, but don't go back this way because Herod is trying to destroy you. Take a different route. I pray for prophetic insight. Sometimes our route has to change because the enemy has set snares along the path. But I pray that God will open our eyes, all of our eyes to see clearly in this season and we'll know what to do, where to go and how to act, oh God. Deliver our steps from all sneers, O oh God. And we thank you for this moment. Thank you for bringing us to your table. Let all your children be encouraged. Whatever spirit of discouragement that they're facing, may they be encouraged, O oh God. Their devotions has been fruitful. Their worship life has been fruitful. Spending time with you has been fruitful. Satan is a liar. Don't leave the presence of God, people of God. It is fruitful. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. And we say amen and amen. Praise the name of Jesus.